What is up guys, it's your boy Ray J back with another video and in this video I'm going to be doing a quick technical analysis of Tesla. I'm going to talk about the overall price movement and what happened today. I'm going to go over some news regarding Tesla and what on earth is happening to the overall market as a whole before I give you guys my stock price prediction for Tesla for the near term future and tomorrow. I'm also going to be doing the exact same thing for NEO, ticker symbol NIO. But before I get started, I have to mention two quick things. First of all, I'm not a financial, legal, or taxation expert, so do not take this as financial, legal, or taxation advice. And also, if you can, please smash that like button if you want to see more videos like this. So, if it's me, it would the entire community as a whole. With that all said and done and out of the way, let's look at Tesla's chart for the day. So, looking at a technical analysis standpoint, Tesla started off at $742 before it had quite some high volatility. Uh, leading to the downward side but overall it did begin to consolidate even more as time progressed but it ended up dropping even lower and it had support at $718.62 and as it dropped to that low point there was a lot of buying pressure quite a bit of buying pressure I should say towards power hour where Tesla closed at $730.17 up or should I say down 3.86% for the day. So I, I just slipped up right there. I said up because I'm so used to saying saying Tesla's up when it closed. But once again, guys, it's down for the day, down 3.86%. But anyways, guys, let's look at some RSI data. And the reason I want you guys to see this RSI data is because it shows that, look, despite the fact that the entire market is in panic mode right now because of what has been happening in China and the negative sentiment towards these stocks and what these institutionalized investors are doing as a response to the news that came out and you know with all the things going on we still see these beautiful beautiful buying moments for tesla and that's a huge 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 sign because that means that tesla has the buying support and that people still see the value in it because they still believe that tesla is at a discount a huge 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 discount so the rsi data did actually touch or even beat the 70 upper band uh, reference level and and ended up closing at 68.99 which shows that there was a lot of buying pressure at the very very end it had a very very good closing but looking at it from another perspective we could actually see how significant these moves were and the, the reason i pull up the one minute chart is so that you could see even more uh uh specific pieces of data regarding the movement in the overall price movement of tesla but you could see right over here that there tended to be high volatility and it was on the upward side of one standard deviation away from the mean multiple times when it was consolidating but then it had this drop and it dropped and dropped and dropped and low and it dropped this low and it actually broke one standard deviation away once again many many times before it went to the upper band towards the very very end and i'm very very happy that that ended up happening because it shows that people are still able to buy it and it had a strong strong um closing if we think about it because it was in the high side but it did end up closing in the red so overall it is red it is a little bit sad to see that but tesla is still doing quite well because the overall market is taking a massive hit and tesla is down 3.86 percent i mean that could even happen in one day on a normal day especially considering that over the past few days tesla has been very 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 green and in the aftermarket hours it did drop slightly and that's a-okay guys i'm still very very bullish but i just want you guys to know something that when you see tesla in the red you could easily become afraid and think what did tesla do what's the problem I want you guys to know that Tesla could be red and the company could do everything right. I mean, if you look at their the advancements in their 3D vector technology, if you look at their advancements in their AI, if you look at the advancements in their battery technology, the fact that they're entering that sector of the market producing batteries and energy and AI, when you look at what this company is doing, when you look at the perceived value of Tesla, Tesla could be at $800 right now. It could have been, but with all the things happening, and I said this in my previous videos, so when I made predictions, I told you that there was always a warning that Tesla could drop with the market as institutionalized investors and people get afraid of the market. They tend to sell alongside with other stocks out there. And the reason I brought that up is because Tesla's beta tends to be a little bit more in the positive direction. It's a positive beta stock, in my opinion. Now, why am I saying that? Why is Tesla a positive beta stock? Because it tends to move with the overall market. It tends to follow what institutionalized investors are doing. And there are other catalysts that are as well that cause nuances. But I'm just letting you guys know that it tends to be down when the market is down as well. Tesla did not cause this. This is due to many other things that happened. And we can actually just check them out uh, real quick right over here. It states that Tesla slips on Evergrande con contagion and report of U.S. vehicle regulator concerns over self-driving tech. So 
I mean, it's horrible that this is happening. I hate to see Tesla slip the way it has been slipping recently. And considering the fact that there are people out there spreading fud about Tesla's self-driving technology once again, I mean, you could see this article right over here from Reuters. It basically states that, oh, the, the National Transportation Safety Board says that Tesla shouldn't roll out of the city. You know, they shouldn't be using their self-driving technology. It was just stating all these horrible, horrible things. I mean, it was just an absolute disaster. They state that the Fed slams Tesla again. I mean, they're just exaggerating, guys. I know that the media tends to do this for more and more clicks and views. And I, I will admit that the full self-driving technology is not 100% perfect yet. It, it does require a person to be at the wheel as of right now. But in the future, where do you see this in 10, 20, 30 years? Where do you see it in five years? It's going to be absolutely brilliant. So once again, guys, it's just fear, uncertainty, and doubt playing its role. It's just the media trying to get its clicks. I mean, it's just sad that that's happening. I'm not necessarily, you know, scared, but I just want to let you guys know that Tesla did little to nothing wrong to cause the red that's happening right here. But this is why Tesla is in the red. It's because of whatever Grant is doing right now. The fact that it's on the verge of bankruptcy and that it has to default on its debt. So there were growing fears, according to Reuters, growing fears of China Evergrande defaulting rattled global markets on Monday as investors worried about the potential impact on the wider economy, dumped Chinese property stocks and sought refugee in the safe haven assets. So what does this have to do with Tesla? Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because there are many, many institutions in America that are actually holding stake in Evergrande. And why is that important? It's important because think about what BlackRock, think about what um, Vanguard, think about what all these index funds, think about what the hedge funds as well are doing when they find out that this is on the verge of bankruptcy and may even need a governmental bailout, which is very, un it's very unlikely that that's going to happen. And people are comparing this to the Lemon Brothers you know, what happened in 2008? People are very, very afraid right now. There's a lot of uncertainty right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if it keeps on happening. Goldman Sachs said last week that because Evergrande has dollar bonds issued by both the parent and special purpose vehicles, recoveries in a potential re re restructuring could differ between the two sets of bonds and the process may be prolonged. So I'm not going to read every specific detail, but I want you guys to know that there is lots of fear right now in the market. Tons of people are panicking, seeing their favorite stocks down. And this has to do with institutionalized investors selling and selling and selling and causing people, even everyday people like you and me, to become afraid and start selling their positions to secure crash, maybe to buy the dips again, just like when Tesla has these dips. So with that all said and done, because I just want you guys to know that there are things that are happening exclusively that are affecting Tesla just the way they have been doing. Now, does this mean that I'm giving up on Tesla? My answer to that is no. In the long term, I'm super, super bullish. I believe Tesla is going to break 1,000 and many, many thousands. But when you look at where Tesla is right now, there are moments where people still buy the dips. So I want you guys to know that there's strong, strong, strong uh, support at the $700 range. I think that Tesla is going to be on a downward trend because of how the overall market is. And Tesla will end up most likely testing the $700 level of support before bouncing a little bit back up in the upside. So it is only down 3.86%. So it's not considerably high and on the downside right now. But I'm still bullish for Tesla in the long term. It's just that we're going to have to get through this. We're going to have to get through all of this you know, fear that's out there, the fact that people are worried there's going to be a big correction. And I, I, I do want you to know that when the market crashes, a lot of people are going to probably buy dips in Tesla. And Tesla will not crash as severely as people may anticipate because I'm still bullish. Now, when it comes to the stock price prediction for tomorrow, I wouldn't be surprised if Tesla drops to $718 or even below that, maybe $715, consolidates and then closes in the $720s or $725 range. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens, if it is just slightly in the red once again. But once again, I have to remind you that this is not Tesla's fault. They did little to nothing wrong to cause this. However, guys, there's another company that took quite a beating, and that is NEO. It's down 6.24%. And the Motley Fool does talk about why this happened. It brought up what has been going on in, in uh, China. It was talking about uh, Evergrande that's thought to be close to bankruptcy and the fact that it's trying to default on its debt and the fact that the Chinese government is thought 
to be unwilling to pay a bailout and that fear in that sector could cause lots and lots of negative effects towards Chinese stocks, especially for American investors and with all the retail investors as well that are just full of fear right now. Institutionalized investors have been selling as well, but it's important to know that even though NEO has been on this downward trend, I still believe in NEO and I still think it has very, very strong support in the mid $30 range. Now it did close at $35.17 down 6.24% once again. And I do think that tomorrow we're going to continue to see it drop to $34.50 around the $3450 range it'll probably consolidate and close at i would say around 3475 it does have a good support right over there so i'm not necessarily worried that neo is going to crash instantly but i do think that the downward trend is going to perpetuate over the next week you could see from a bullinger standpoint that neo was on the downside quite some time it was on the lower band multiple multiple times but i'm not worried i'm still not worried for neo because just like tesla just like neo Neo did nothing wrong to cause this to happen. Neo is not at fault here. This has to do with the overall market. Now, the thing is, this is a good buying opportunity if you want to buy. I'm not going to force you to do it. I'm not giving financial advice, but this could be a buying opportunity to buy the dips. Also, guys, remember that Neo and Tesla are for the long term. They're long term buys. We buy them and hold them and wait for the long term, and we have to remain patient. So I wouldn't be surprised if Neo's in the 34 mid to high $34 range tomorrow. And I am still super, super bullish. So it's going to require lots and lots of patience. It's a game of patience, but you cannot let your emotions get the best of you. Now, with that said and done, guys, I want to thank you so much for listening. I know it's a little bit scary and sad to see that your portfolios are red. My portfolios are very, very red right now, but I'm not scared because I believe in the future of these companies. I didn't invest for how Tesla is going to be tomorrow. I'm not day trading it. I'm simply buying and holding it and waiting it out for the big, big pieces of news that are going to come, the innovations it's going to bring into our society. And it's insanely awesome future. Thank you guys. And I will see you on the next one. Stay strong and never, ever give up on your dreams.